Now this is just some of the very first shots I got with the Insta360 ONE R, a camera that I'm actually really excited about. I was able to get these shots by just zip tying a stick onto the back of the motorcycle and letting that 360 cam hang off the back there. Really cool the type of effects you can get out of these cameras. I made a first impressions video about it, but at the time we weren't allowed to share any of the footage that we shot just yet because it was such an early prototype. But now I've been able to take this all around Thailand, get all kinds of interesting shots shots with it and let me give you my honest thoughts on this new action camera. They're the best competitor to GoPro that's come out in a very long time. I'll say that for sure. And the main reason is because of the modularity and the flexibility of this camera. So let's start off right here, which is your 4K lens. It's an F2.8 and 16.4 millimeter equivalent lens. This will just click in here like a puzzle. And this is kind of like your standard action camera, right? And then of course there's the 360 module, which has a lens on both sides. So both of them super wide and with the two halves together, you have a full spherical image, so then you can do all kinds of effects with it. I mean, till recently, this was very difficult to access technology, and now we have it very easily. And then finally, we have our one inch module. That's a 5.3K resolution. It's an F3.2 at a 14.4 millimeter equivalent. Now, one inch sensor in the action camera, that's interesting because that's bigger than what we're used to. Reasons why we like the one inch sensor is because we should be be able to achieve better low light out of it. Also just better overall clarity and sharpness with that 5.3K sensor. And also most of the time we like having that shallower depth of field, which you get out of a larger sensor. But in this case, it's a fixed focus. So that shallow depth of field might actually play against us, but we'll see. Now let's start off with the 360 module and Insta360, that's where they get their name. They've really killed it in the past with their 360 camera. As a matter of fact, my favorite 360 camera till now is the One X. I've made a couple videos about this guy in the past. Great little 360 camera, pretty simple to use. And then we also have the GoPro Max. The one advantage I did like about the Max was that it did have a screen here so you could kind of monitor what you're recording. But the downside of it is that in 360 mode, there is no slow motion. That's kind of the biggest deal breaker for me. So I generally stuck with the One X. But the reason why I really like the One R's 360 camera is because the workflow. So what I mean by that is with these two cameras, we would essentially shoot a clip. And after we shoot it, we would download the full 360 clip onto our phone. And after that's downloaded, then we can finally go and edit it and then reframe the shots or whatever, and then export it, which would take another few minutes. So it's a couple different steps with wait time in between. But the beauty of the new one R is that you can skip the downloading step because when you wirelessly connect to the camera, you can already start reframing and editing the shots while it's still on the camera. Then once once you figure out what you wanna do with the shot, you hit one button and then it does an export onto your phone. So it kinda of takes the downloading and exporting process into one step. So if you shoot a lot of 360 footage, I mean, that I think would probably cut my workflow time in half, maybe even a third. Cause I always hated the process of, you know, going like, okay, I'm gonna start the download. I gotta come back to this in five, 10 minutes. So I gotta go distract myself. Oh, I come back, it's downloaded. All right, now I can finally edit. And then I have to export again and go wait another. It, it just takes time. So being able to simplify the steps alone is enough for me to recommend this over the One X. Other benefits, it has a screen here so you could actually monitor what your shot's gonna be like and you can look around just like the GoPro Max could do. And also it's waterproof and the One X wasn't. Now you can't submerge this underwater and expect it to stitch properly. I believe you need an external case for that but it's nice being able to just go around and film at the beach without worrying about it getting splashed. And I put it underwater a couple of times just for the hell of it. And yeah, it's waterproof. I tested it, it's good to go. The one advantage the One X might have is notice the lenses are a little bit tighter together opposed to the One R. So that may give us better stitch lines from the One X. All right, so I'm gonna put these two down right here and I'm just gonna cross the stitch line and I'm about arm's length away from both these cameras. So I'm on, this side of the lens and now I'm on the other side of the lens. Does the blending look good or no? I'm gonna come a little bit closer. I'm gonna say I'm about two feet away now-ish and let's see how that stitch looks. Does it look terrible if I slowly cross over? And then this is just really close. This is what, like seven, eight inches away and I'm gonna start here and I'm just gonna 
make my way over to the other lands. And once again, I'm gonna come over to here. I don't know how much of a difference it actually makes, but you guys know, I haven't seen the footage yet. So you guys be the judges. I don't like forming opinions. Now, one thing I will say the GoPro has mastered is wind noise. And I've been amazed at how good the sound quality can be even at very high speeds on the GoPro Max. I took it on some roller coasters and shockingly, the audio wasn't terrible even when we're going 60, 70 miles per hour. It's not like perfect audio, but but it's still very well managed. And I believe they do that by having a bunch of microphones placed within the camera and there's just auto switches between the best sounding sources. Should we go do a quick little audio test between the two? Let's go. Wanna take a quick break and go on a motorcycle ride? Yeah. I would usually be like, I don't know, it's kind of weird for us to get on the same motorcycle, but we did it all around Thailand that I feel like it's not a big deal anymore. And I was wearing a pink helmet. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> the only thing is I need you to hold two cameras while we're rolling. Okay. <laughs> And we are going 30. Let's talk to the Insta360, what you think? Dude, I felt like a kite. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little different from the scooters in Thailand. Oh, right? dude, that was crazy. <laughs> as soon as you like revved a little bit, I started sliding up and I'm like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, first you had like a very gentle like grasp yeah. and then it very quickly was like. <laughs> <laughs> Did I hear a good representation? Here, let yeah. me show you. Oh yeah, that's that's how I felt. That was nuts. I'm like shaking a little bit. You still can throw this on that invisible selfie stick and it looks like it's just a camera levitating in the air. It's magical. You can get that 5.7K at 30 frames per second, 4K at 50 frames per second, and 3K at up to 100 frames per second, which is what I use for that bullet time effect. You make it slow motion, put it on a stick and twirl it around your head. Looks super cool. I'm also loving the app for the One R. It definitely helps to have one of the newer phones out there just because when you do this much processing on your phone faster the phone the smoother your workflow is gonna be there's also like the hyperlapse feature where essentially you just record a regular video and you just walk around for a while and it makes this time warp effect and adds in this motion blur and on this shot I tested out the AI function of it so I actually didn't frame this time lapse up I just kind of let the app decide what to frame on and it's surprisingly smart obviously I would always recommend manually punching in your angles and shots but you know having that AI feature could be nice sometimes and they've told me there's all kinds of other effects coming to the app so it's just gonna expand the capabilities as it goes and also this firmware on this camera being updated constantly right now so things I say right now might change throughout the next couple months we'll see now let's move on to the 4k module which is kind of your standard action camera what's interesting is that you can actually buy this as a pair for currently 479 for the 360 module as well as this 4k and that is basically called the twin edition so 479 for that but then if you want to just get the 360 head then it's 449 so really only 30 bucks more to get this head so definitely suggest getting the pair might as well right but if you don't feel like you need the 360 module on here then you could get just this 4k head for 299 so 300 bucks basically Basically, this is competing on price for sure. It's $100 less than the GoPro Hero 8 if you just go for this module. Now let's slap on the 4K module, which is kind of like your standard action camera. Looks pretty familiar, huh? But there's definitely pros and cons to both. First of all, what I love about GoPros is that they're so refined. I mean, what is this? The eighth generation, I assume? It's a really, really solid action camera. Everything about it just works and it's gotten improved over time after time. But first obvious fault, of the Hero 8 is they made it so you can't just replace this lens, which is usually the first thing to go on these cameras. It gets scuffed over time or it gets cracked. I've cracked a couple of these, two of them from mounting it somewhere and it taking a hard hit. And once we shot an explosive bow and arrow at it and the concussion cracked the lens, you know, typical action stuff, right? I just want to blow something up. We really want to make some pie tonight. Oh 
much. GoPros are durable, but not necessarily explosion proof. Whoa, this crack is making a cool little effect here. But bottom line, I've replaced these lens covers multiple times and I can't figure out why they thought they should just make it fixed on the Hero 8. I mean, I guess I kind of know why. They need to make it so that you'll need to replace your GoPro after a couple years instead of just repairing your old ones. They don't make money off that. Anyways, I hate the fact that you can't just replace out this lens. Sure, you could slap stuff on top of it or whatever. Why can't we just make it replaceable? So that has got to be my biggest gripe about the Hero 8. But on the 1R, ta-da. I mean, these are action cameras, right? They're gonna get busted up. I mean, whose idea was this? Who, ah! So what are the things we look for in an action camera? Well, one size, they're both pretty comparable. And then of course, we want many different ways to mount it. So this shares the same type of these, what, I don't even know what you call these. It's like the little things that go, the GoPro mount essentially. This has it, so anything that a GoPro can mount to, this can mount onto it as well. We got good stabilization coming out of both these cameras and the image quality out of this 4K lens I'm definitely happy with. I've been using just the standard color mode on there and of course it's waterproof you go take it swimming and that's one of the things that still freak me out every time I take the swimming is because it comes apart so easily and snaps in and you're like okay is this actually waterproof now but it is I've taken it swimming a bunch of times and it hasn't given me any issues yet. Now the screen of the GoPro is gonna be bigger and better but the really big selling point of this 1R we're gonna pop off the battery we're gonna pop this off reverse it, we're gonna put it all back together, and now we have a selfie facing screen, which is awesome, especially if you plan on doing any sort of vlogging. And also when you mount it in all kinds of different places, a lot of times you can't see your screen. And with action cameras, I'm never really looking at it very closely. So I don't really care that much about the large screen. I usually just wanna reference like what's in frame. And once I see that, that's good enough for me. So if I could choose between the bigger screen or the reversible screen, I'm 100% for this reversible screen. This one also has a cold shoe up top, basically a hot shoe, but with no you know, electrical going through it. And of course we need great audio. So we got this tiny little mic adapter that fits in right there. And now we got a 3.5 millimeter mic jack right there. So this right here might be a killer little miniature vlog solution. So let me pull the microphone off here real quick. I mean, obviously this microphone way too big for a little tiny camera like this, but hey, how's it look and sound? I mean, I love how compact and lightweight this camera is and I also love that with this selfie stick I don't have to hold the camera up here because I feel like that's part of what makes vlogging awkward sometimes is you're going around holding the camera like this but if you have your hand rested down here it feels a little bit more natural I think but yeah pretty decent image quality considering the size of the camera you got your self-facing monitor and the microphone up top plane. so not bad we got a plane ruining everything well that plane's going pretty fast you see it it's going pretty fast but yeah, I say it's not too bad, huh? Here, Sam, what do you think? On today's vlog, we're gonna talk about my feelings, hopes, and dreams. All right, let's test out the <laughs> image stabilization with a chase scene. Ah, I kind of feel like a rapist or something. <laughs> How stable is the footage though? Pretty good? Huh? Stable Sam is what they call me. I'm thinking one of the smaller microphones would be awesome, like the Rode Video Micro or that wireless Go one, that little tiny one. That would fit very nicely on top of this camera and you can hook the microphone onto your collar or something. So you get really good audio quality out of that. So I'd say this is a pretty good solution if you're looking for a vlogging camera that's this tiny. Now after listening to some of that audio out of those kind of higher end speakers, I am definitely noticing that the audio with this setup, with this adapter, just isn't a hundred percent there. There's something missing. That could be a couple different reasons. I mean, maybe it's because this is an early prototype unit. It could also be something that could be adjusted in the firmware, or maybe this adapter just isn't as powerful as something that you might find in others. So let me show you what I mean. So now we're switched over to this microphone and we're recording audio from this microphone through this camera. This is what the audio sounds like. Now I'm gonna take the same exact microphone and hook it up to this camera. So same mic, different port, and three, two, one. And there you go. This is what the audio quality sounds like when I plug that same microphone into my EOS R. Sounds a little bit different, right? And again, same exact microphone, but this time recording into the GoPro. Now, if you look, you will notice that the mic adapter for the GoPro is much bigger. I wonder if that's why. Maybe it can serve more power to the microphone or something. I don't know enough about audio microphones to explain this, but when you listen to it on higher quality speakers or headphones, 
headphones or whatever, you definitely notice some sort of difference. Another thing to note, this adapter here, I think was like 50 or 60 bucks, something like that. This adapter for the One R is only 10 bucks and it's also like a 10th of the size. So there's that. It'd be really cool if Insta360 released kind of like a pro mic adapter, which sure, it's gonna be bigger and more expensive than this, but delivers very high quality audio. That would be awesome. Now let's circle back to the audio on the Insta360 One R. And again, this is a prototype unit. So I'll see what they say. And if they send me a different sample that sounds better, I'll put all the notes and updates in the description. I imagine there's gonna be lots of updates coming. So definitely go check that because as I test out the updates, I will be updating everything down there. Now comparing some frame rates, we got 4K 60 on both. At 2.7K, you can get 100 frames per second on the One R and 120 frames per second on the GoPro. In full HD, you're getting 200 frames per second out of the One R and 240 frames per second out of the GoPro. So pretty comparable. The GoPro does have that edge there. Another thing I love about the Hero 8 is how wide it gets. A lot of times I'll use these action cameras as kind of POV cameras. So if I mount it up here or down here, I want it to see everything I'm seeing. So I love being able to get the widest angle I possibly can out of these cameras. So here's a couple shots you can compare at its four by three aspect ratio. So both of these cameras are at its widest possible settings while still maintaining image stabilization. And the GoPro definitely wins on this front. But of course, this is with the 4K wide angle, which is the 16.4 millimeter equivalent. There is the one inch module, which we'll get into a little bit later. And this is a 14.4 millimeters. So this is actually wider than this 4K module. Insta360 is talking about future modules that we can plug and play into here. So who knows, maybe they'll make an ultra wide one of these, which is actually something that I would like to request. I would love a super wide angle, just action camera. Cause if I'm out using my motorcycle helmet, I love just putting this on super view and it just captures everything. It's not bad with the one R, but I definitely notice everything in a little bit tighter. Another thing I think GoPro's done a really good job at is handling noise. Now let's start with the GoPro, okay? I'm gonna switch the microphone over to the GoPro. So now you are listening to the sound from this GoPro and watch this. I'm just gonna kind of, you know, handle it like I would. I'm just kind of switching the positions of how I want to hold it. I'm gonna rub it a little bit on all sides. This is gonna probably sound terrible no matter what, but you can generally hear what I'm talking about. See, just like that. But for the most part, it's not bad, right? All right, now let's switch over to the Insta360. So now this is audio from the Insta360. You'll immediately notice the audio quality sounds different. But anyways, here's a little bit of handling noise. I'm just gonna kind of switch my hand positioning around. And there we go. And then of course, I'm gonna start rubbing at it. It's gonna sound like a disaster, but here's how it sounds. What do you guys think? How much are you hearing? Actually, I can't hear anything. So again, you guys be the judge of it. Another thing that's different as of right now is the workflow at the moment, because currently the GoPro, you hit record and it adds the stabilization in camera. And when you pull the memory card, you have an MP4 or MOV file. Now this Insta360 currently has its own format and you have to actually process it with either your phone or your computer to add that stabilization into the footage afterwards. And then you can export it into MP4 or MOV. MOV. They did tell me that in a future firmware update, it is gonna be able to just write directly into an MP4 or MOV. So if you're trying to do something with a quick turnaround time, that's probably the way to go. But there are advantages to that extra step in the workflow. One, you can adjust your field of view afterwards. So it's almost like shooting raw, you know? You have your clip and you can choose between ultra wide and wide and narrow and linear. These are features that you would burn into the clip on the GoPro. So once you set it, you can't change change it. On here, if you decide, oh, I wish I shot that in a wider field of view, you have that option. And then if you want to do stuff like adding color plus, which is its more vibrant setting, you can always add that in later. But then if you're like, oh, I don't like how it looks, then you could remove it. So you have more flexibility with the way the One R is currently set up. But again, it's simpler on the GoPro. But when Insta360 is able to just write straight into an MP4 or MOV or whatever, then this is probably going to have the workflow advantage because you'll have the option of choosing shooting either or. And one feature I am excited about that's coming in a future firmware update is to be able to connect this to Bluetooth devices like AirPods. So you'll essentially be able to just throw these on and record audio into here, which I think would be really cool. I honestly don't know what the audio quality out of these earbuds are, but let me just try this out real quick. So I'm recording a voice memo on my phone. So yeah, we are using the microphones out of here right now. 
Does it sound any good? Is this an acceptable level of microphone quality if I'm just wearing these? Because if that is, that's pretty sweet because literally you just have these on and there's your vlogging setup right there. All right, so I just listened to the audio quality coming out of these into my phone. Nah, it didn't sound any good. I don't know if it's able to capture better audio than that, but maybe AirPods just are not the way to go. There's probably some better, higher quality microphones that you can hook this up to wirelessly. Another thing is they both have quick start options. So if I press the shutter, they both turn on and start recording automatically. And I like that the GoPro has a real fast boot up time. So let's see how many seconds it takes. Ready? Zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So you can see the GoPro kicked online much faster. So overall, I would say I really appreciate how refined the Hero 8 is. It does a lot of things right, but if I could only have this or this, I'd probably go for the 1R, specifically because of how modular it is. I can switch it out for that 360 camera or let's try out this one inch sensor now. So this big old thing fits on just like you with the GoPro. And yes, it is also reversible. So you can attach that screen either in selfie mode or just kind of regular camera mode is what I'll call it. <laughs> so now that we have the one inch mod on there, let's do a little side by side with the GoPro. Which one looks better? Insta 360 one inch with the one inch sensor or the GoPro? The one inch sensor is recording 5.3K, so we're getting a higher resolution and also should be better in low light as well because of that larger sensor. I got my nice studio lighting on right now, but let me bring this down a little bit now. We're getting dark. Is it looking good? Now how are we looking over here? We're getting some more intense lighting. All right, let's turn off this backlight too. Now it's getting pretty dim. It's actually really dim here. Let me bring up this key light a little bit. Just give me a little bit more exposure. And you can just see as I gradually bring up the light, you can see kind of the low light capabilities. How's it look? Let's pause here and take a closer look. One inch sensor, clear winner here, right? Smaller sensors usually need to denoise like crazy and losing a ton of detail along the way. So the beauty here is the amount of detail that is retained opposed to just kind of getting mushed together into a big blurry image. So definitely a good step up in the action camera world. And if you compare it to the wide angle lens on my iPhone 11 Pro Max, huge, huge difference there. So there is that big advantage of carrying around that one inch sensor. If we take a closer look at the bricks, you could immediately tell how much of a difference in detail there actually is. But you also have to remember that all these action cameras do use a digital image stabilization, which means during the daytime when it's nice and bright, they all perform great. But when you get into low light, each frame is gonna have some motion blur in there. So the more you move, the more you're gonna recognize all the blurriness in your shot every time you move. So my advice when shooting at night, try to keep that camera nice and stable. Try not to treat it so much like like an action camera, hold it nice and steady, and you'll get some pretty good results that way. Now, one of the reasons why we love larger sensors is for shallower depth of field. You know, you get part of the shot in focus and the background all blurry and all that. It looks more professional, it's cooler. But on the other hand, when you have a lens like this that's a fixed focus, that means you can't really push or pull focus, then this generally tries to get everything in focus as much as possible. So then all of a sudden, that shallow depth of field no longer becomes a good thing and you actually want to capture as much of it in focus as possible. So this does have an ultra wide 14.4 millimeter angle and an F3.2, which should capture a lot of it in focus, but inevitably part of the shot will be out of focus. So what we're looking at here is how close can Sam get to the camera before we lose focus. So this is about a foot away from the camera. It's a bit uncomfortably close, but you'll probably notice that if you look closely, Sam's a little bit out of focus in the background is pretty sharp. Now let's go to about like two feet away, something like this. How's that look? And probably about three feet. I think this is about the minimum focusing distance. So if you have a stick like this, it's pretty easy to hold it out at that distance. I mean, that's probably where you wanna vlog if you're using the one inch sensor. Holy crap, this video already 20 minutes long. So let's just try to wrap this up here. Final thoughts, if I could only have one action camera, it would definitely be this because this essentially replaces a couple different cameras. I mean, you got your action camera here, 
you got your 360 camera here you got a one inch sensor for low light environments the price is right in between the modules you can do a whole ton of stuff they are also working on firmware updates as we speak so this camera is only gonna get better as time goes on if i had to choose i definitely get this 360 module and this 4k head and like this one a lot you got a 200 frames per second and all that the windage also does have some slow-mo features and they're pretty decent but not as good as the 4k modules so yeah for a majority of people i would say this is the way to go now how about gopro this obviously can't pull all the fancy tricks and be all modular but it is just such a well polished action camera it only does one thing but it does it really well which is exactly why i'm using the gopro for this helmet mount I hate the fact that you can't replace this screen but i'm planning on just leaving this on my helmet and if this gets scratched up that means i probably crashed my motorcycle so that'll be bad news anyways i know exactly what i want out of it i just want that super view wide angle and also the mic adapter is much bigger and a bit more expensive but i do like the quality of audio that this produces and it's a stereo signal so i have it fed out to here where you can see there's a right and a left signal so it's recording two mono channels essentially now i got one microphone right here by my mouth so i can talk while writing and the secondary microphone up here by my earpiece so if i have my intercom on we can kind of listen in on what everyone's talking about and it records that stereo signal one mic on each channel so i can easily just cut one microphone out in post-production so my personal plan for my moto vlogging setup i'm using the gopro for everything else i'm probably using one of these modules here oh another reason to go for this insta 361r though is the future modules that are going to come out one that i'm most excited about is the drone module i was able to play with the prototype for a split second but i cannot wait for the final production unit to come in i want to make a whole video about it essentially you got your drone you have one lens up top one lens down the bottom and then you use the same brain as this you fly the drone around it creates a 360 video and it erases out the drone i mean that's gonna be epic i cannot wait to do more testing with that anyways hopefully this has been helpful i'm gonna throw some links down below to where you can check out this camera as well as the gopro or whatever you want to try to buy use my links so i get commission <laughs> but let's wrap this up a few comments from my last video which was all about the c500 mark ii which is this beast right here let's see what you guys had to say first things first i asked if i should make a video about this versus the eos r or should i just focus on making more videos on affordable cameras and basically 96 percent of you want to see c500 mark ii versus eos r so i guess that'll be the video i'll start working on today i have absolutely no interest in this camera at all but i still watch the whole video <laughs> great video mr I mean, that's crazy. I mean, that video is 20 minutes long and this video over 20 minutes long. But if you guys are sticking around anyways, even if you have no interest in buying this camera, then I, I appreciate that. But I'd still appreciate it more if you use my affiliate links down below and bought stuff. I can just imagine Buddhist monks sending up memes to Gene. Jared says, hey, you're a year older than me, joining you in the 30s club this March. Well, congratulations. There's a lot to look forward to. Like you want to take lots of naps. You get tired all the time. You crave snacks that are unhealthy.